It's the Packet Froa! Welcome to the channel! In this video, we're going to have a look at Terraform and use it to build out a somewhat complicated cloud infrastructure by setting up the networking. What we're going to do is we are going to have a few virtual machines here. And our goal is to set up transit gateway networking such that our Cisco CSR router provides internet access. And then we're going to set up some VPN connectivity so that my LAN can reach the virtual machines. So it should be a lot of fun. So specifically the different components that we have here is we have our virtual machines, which is basically just going to be some Linux hosts. And then we're going to have to create our own route tables for each one of the networks and tie that over to a VPC to hold all our networking. Then we are going to wrap all these together with what's called a transit gateway. And this is going to handle our routing so that we can set our default route. to point to our CSR router here. And then on our CSR, we're gonna configure it so that it does the NAT and whatnot automatically for us. The only thing I can't do automatically is because I have a Meraki box, I can't actually configure the VPNs because the APIs don't allow that and there's no CLI for me to push things through. So I'm gonna to have to do some copying and pasting at the end of this there, but for the most part, we'll be doing this entirely with Terraform. So inside of AWS, the only thing I need to do is to create a user and get its API information. So I'm going to go to services and then I am. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a user. We're going to call this Terraform. And we want problematic access. And it's going to go ahead and allow all access. So we're just going to go next. Not going to worry about tags. And we're going to create the user. So now this is done, I have the access key and the secret. So I need to go ahead and put these into my Terraform script. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the key. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that under the AWS access key variable I have. And this file is the terraform.tfrs file. This is where we store more sensitive variable values inside Terraform. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the secret key. And I'll give my usual warning here that uh, be careful with these because uh, if someone has these keys there, they have full access to your uh, AWS infrastructure, which can be a bad thing if it's the wrong person. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So now we have the keys set, so uh, let's just have a quick look at the solution here. I'm not gonna go in too much detail, but basically the way Terraform works is that um, it's going to parse the folder for anything with a TF file there. So this lets us break up the long script into many different files there to keep it more organized. So for example, the AWS TF that I made here is referencing those access keys. And these are the values for the variables that we want to keep secret. And the rest of the variables are defined in the variable TF. So we can see things like the subnet values that I've set here don't need to be protected, but the access keys, that's where we're gonna reference the TF vars file. And that should be excluded from any uh, configuration management stuff you have like GitHub. It's not too much complexity that I want to point out, except for I am using Ansible. And the reason for that is I'm using this to configure the Cisco router because Terraform is a provisioner. It's not meant to actually configure um, existing resources. So therefore Ansible or other solutions are better for doing that. So this is where I'm actually applying to get the NAT configured by applying the config router.yaml file. And then I am also running a Python script here that is gonna get some extra information. So the config router is simply pushing some configuration there and you can see that I'm just pushing some NAT configuration and making sure the interfaces are enabled as well as making sure that I have some static routes 
because one thing to keep in mind with AWS there is it doesn't necessarily support multicast routing, so that static routes are the better way to go in most situations. They are starting to roll that out a little bit, but static routes is probably the best way forward for quite a while. And then if we look at the Meraki Python script, Basically what I'm doing here is I am parsing the VPN uh, configuration file that AWS gets, which is an XML file. And just sharing the uh, pre-share keys so that I can output it at the end. And then lastly we have the output, which is just going to give me that VPN information there. And this is so I can copy that and paste that into my Meraki to complete the VPN. So with all that out of the way, let's just go ahead and run this. So I'm just going to type terraform apply. And this is going to read all the TF files there and come up with a plan. So we can see here, it's just going to say these all, or these various resources are all going to be created. And if we look at my AWS, we can see I have no running instances or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. By the way, you can do dash auto dash approve if you don't want to be prompted. And this is going to run for several minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and then we'll have a look at what we did afterwards. Okay, that ran for about 10 minutes. And we can see here that we've added 69 resources. So if I scroll through it here, we got quite a lot of output of all the different stuff that's being created here. So for example, we can see the VPCs being created. And if I scroll down a bit, I should see the Ansible playbook running where it's pushing the configuration to the router. And then at the very end, the outputs is being displayed for me there. So we can see that the IP address of the CSR router I created because it is dynamic and I wouldn't know otherwise. And then it's going to remind me what the private IPs are of my Linux hosts. And then it is giving me the VPN information for my Meraki script so that I can go ahead and copy and paste this into my Meraki for the VPN to work. So this is my Meraki. Uh, because uh, this is a live environment, I had to cover up some stuff, but I did go ahead and copy and paste the values here and allow these networks. So I should be able to go ahead and, and we should be good to go. So after about a minute or so, I should be able to ping one of the Linux hosts. And I can, we'll try that with the other ones. And then there was three. So now I should be able to SSH to one of those Linux hosts. And we are using public key authentication. There we go. And if everything works, I should be able to get online. Now we need to verify that I'm actually going through the router. So let's just go back to our output here and log into the CSR. So the easiest way to verify this would be simply to check NAT. And we can see that we are indeed NATing our internet traffic. We can see our solution works, so let's just take a few minutes and see what we actually built here. So if I refresh this, we now see that I have four running instances, which are our Linux hosts and also our CSR router. If we look, only the CSR has a public IP, which is what we want. We wanted the VMs to have to go for our CSR router to get online. If I look on the networking side of things under VPC, we can see that we have four VPCs, a bunch of subnets, some route tables, internet gateways, so let's just look through this here. So our VPCs are what I showed in the initial diagram there. We have our VPC one, two, and three. 
and also the transit, which if you remember from here, it shall pick a different color here, but if you remember from here, we have VBC one, two, three, and transit. And then each one will need a route table, which we have here. We have our route tables that I pointed out and also one for the internet. And then these are associated with uh, various gateways there, so they don't necessarily need a name. In order for the uh, CSR to get on the internet, we need an internet gateway, so we have that there. And then, like I mentioned, everything will connect to the transit gateway. And we don't need to get into the nitty gritty here, but there is a routing table associated. And we can see that this is the default route I was talking about, which points towards the transit VPC where our CSR router is. So this is just a quick example how something like Terraform can make it easy to build your cloud uh, infrastructure or any other infrastructure. And this is why infrastructure as code is becoming very popular. Now, because everything in the cloud costs money there, to get rid of it, we can just do terraform destroy, and I can add that dash auto dash approve, so it's not going to ask me about it. This is going to go through and delete all the resources created there, so after a couple minutes, my account will be uh, back to not uh, causing any billing issues. Well, with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll see you next time.